everyone, my name is Jaybird, and welcome back to Lake of Voices. So, uh, yeah. Here we go! We... wait. This one. This one. Alright. <clears throat> we stay ever vigilant for any so sounds of danger from the lake. She sighs softly beside me with a shake of her head. Oh, if only I had thought of that paper trick sooner. The guide might have let us stay. Probably. Probably not. Don't blame yourself for that. The guide likely would have said that it agitated the Nixie too much, or could set the bridges on fire accidentally and was too risky to attempt. Margaret smirks slightly and snorts at my meager attempt to voice the guide's thoughts. <laughs> that is exactly what he would have said. I nod while entranced by my own thoughts. If anyone should be feeling regret right now, it would be me. The reason my lantern broke was because I had thrown it to assist the guide when we were on the island. It was impossible not to have noticed your little act of heroism. I had been wondering if that was it. I'm sorry. Please don't apologize. Unfortunately, we can't just leave the guide to fend for himself like he does for us. You had to be sure he remained to lead the group. It's your tendency for decision making that is probably why he wanted you to stay. Mm. Pings of pain sting in my chest. No matter how much I try to ignore it, I feel terrible about making Margaret remain behind in this bleak, spiraling maze while I chose someone else to accompany the guide. I dip my head down in a hot flush of shame. You couldn't force the guide to take the both of us. You tried. Tears form in the corners of my eyes at her gentle words. You're far too kind, Margaret. No matter the situation, I still made a decision, and it wasn't to ensure your safety. She hardens her face and looks at me seriously. When the guide said that only you could go, a part of me was thankful. You would be fine with him. Uh. But, I admit, another part of me disliked being the one left behind. Not by the guide, but by you. It's silly, I know. Still, in a way, it's comforting that at least we're still with one another. Even counting the circumstances that led to this. Oh, you love me, don't you? You have a little girl crush on me. That's cute. Besides, with no lantern, no glasses, and an indifferent guide, I severely doubt that I'd be faring much better under his care. Margaret grows wistful and speaks softly. What I'm trying to say is that I never would have been able to make the kind of decision that you had to, and I think it made sense for everyone. Thank you. I feel tears well up in my eyes from gratitude to Margaret for all her kindness. She chuckles lightly. If that isn't a sign that I'm not meant to be a guide myself, then I don't know what is. I dry my tears with my sleeve with a small sniffle. You've truly decided against that? Yes, absolutely. I never want to see any lake again for as long as I live. Oof, those poor lakes out there. <laughs> Since I don't have any plans, I'll have to find a nearby village on the other side to stay out for a time. I'll decide what the next step on my path will be then. Knowing Margaret won't be stepping on these bridges again after this night eases my heart greatly. The future is starting to look bright somehow. I look at her shyly. I would still like to help you, if that's possible. Oh, you'd like to help her in some other ways now, Kika. Mm -hmm. A small bashful smile creeps onto Margaret's face. Well, I suppose I could see what your town is like after all. I will need directions. I beam widely at her. The air between us feels warm with a light-hearted pleasance. Directions are not nearly enough. For that journey, I will lead you myself. I'll be sure to bring you there safely, Margaret. Do you guys ever just get so overwhelmed from, like, cheesy, romantic, flirty dialogue that you just, you're cringing inside and you wish you were dead? Because that's me right now. I wish I was dead. But not really. But, you know, you know, the feeling, you know. I 
Anyways, sorry. I keep getting distracted. <laughs> <sighs> Margaret giggles under her breath. Thank you. I'm positive you'll make for a better one than our last guide. Well, okay. The two of us share a smile together for a moment's reprieve. However, for any of our wishes to come true, we need to refocus on the situation at hand. We allow the conversation to fade out. The last of our happy voices drift away from us and are absorbed into the mist. There is still not even a trace of a prowler on the bridges, nor any nixie in the water. Both Margaret and I, Margaret and I silently agree to speed up a bit. I don't know how much ground we have left to cover, however, time is not a commo commodity we have to spare. We keep at this brisker pace for quite a while, however, eventually we have to stop for a breather again. A very light but noticeable stirring becomes audible on the lake. I hope dearly that it's only the wind. There's, a bl there's an inkling of fear inside me that it isn't. We cut our rest short and continue forward at an even quicker pace. Running around at the speed of sound, after a while longer of pushing ahead, the faint silhouette of land appears on the horizon. I nearly can't believe what I'm seeing. I attempt to steady my rising heart rate, getting close enough to, see, to land to see it. To see it only requires going towards it for long enough, but the true test is finding the bridge that will actually run ground. Run ground. Still, we have an honest-to-goodness fighting chance. Margaret reaches over to take my hand into hers and squeezes lightly. Don't squeeze me, girl. I look at Margaret, reassuring. Her hold isn't out of fear as it is so easily could- as it's- as it so easily could be. This time it is from a determined anticipation. Wait, hold on. From a determined anticipation. We start running. Pishin. Our footsteps in sync. We cross a long path and come across a, s a strange sight. It's a bridge which curves in and becomes more narrow in the middle than usual. Oh. Eyeing the dubious bridge war warily, I grow nervous at the idea of getting that close to the edge. Yet, we've never seen anything like this before. Could this possibly mean that this bridge is important? Then I hear it, the whispers of the Nixie. There's no mistaking it now. We've been found by them. Her confidence hasn't gone, but Margaret huddles a little closer to me. Margaret surveys the area, looking at the bridge, and then to the lake. Her features are marred with concern, however, she manages to keep a brave face on. We should keep going this way. There aren't any other branches here, and backtracking won't help us get to the shore. There's a bit of a limit on how much time we have to reach it. I nod in agreement. At this point, going forward is our only option. Could we possibly use burning paper to distract the Nixie again? It could keep those monsters away for long enough to cross this part. We could run after that. Margaret doesn't reply immediately. She seems unsure of the idea. I realize it may not be possible to balance on the bridge while light lighting and tossing paper torches all around. Will you give me the supplies for it if there are any left? I'd like to make some. Margaret dons a lopsided grin. She reads me well. She reads me as well as I do, do her. You are very sharp, Kika, and very kind. Thank you. I blush slightly at her words. A smile from within, growing on my face. I'll crumple the paper ahead of time and hand them to you as we go. Then, you can light and throw. Hooray. I gesture in agreement. The compromise is solid. Neither of us should be at too much, of, much risk if the job is shared between both her and myself. Margaret begins the mon... 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 mon monotonous... I've always had trouble saying that because I want to give the... I want to give the, you know, the sharp T sound because, you know, monotone, but then it's like monotonous, and I'm like, monotonous, monotonous, hakuna ma matatas, mm-hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> Margaret begins the monotonous job of tearing the pages out of the book and forming them into balls while I keep, wa while I keep watch for any sign of danger. As I stand quietly amid the ripping and crunching of paper, I can't help but let some curi curiosity leak out. What is... Or rather was that book. 
Margaret rips another page out of it as she answers. Is it your diary or something? It was a blank notebook. I had been feeling it. Oh. The fact that she brought that with her on this journey makes the con contents easy to guess. It also makes it clear why she is so readily tearing it up. I take a step out on a limb. I take a step out on a limb and attempt to brighten the mood some with, with a teasing comment. This is the second time you've saved me by finding something unexpected to light on fire. Should I be concerned that you have a pattern of setting what's around you ablaze? She's a pyromaniac, of course. Her eyebrows shoot up and she abruptly snorts. No, you should not. The Nixie are afraid of light. It has nothing to do with me. Okay. I still thought it best to check. We both share a small laugh. It certainly didn't compare to Margaret's skill in that area, but it pleases me that we were able to enjoy it regardless. Once we have a fair amount of pieces to work with, I take out my own set of matches. I ignite one by striking it on my rough leather belt, and Margaret hands me a piece of paper. I light the paper ball and toss it onto the abyssal lake. The light is jostled by a lone wave that definitely could not have been caused by the wind. The two of us begin to cross the bridge on forcibly steadied legs. I light up makeshift tor touches. <coughs> makeshift touches. Makeshift torches! Hello! One after the other, tossing it wherever another flickers out. The water around us churns like a mill pond, however, nothing within the lake has surfaced thus far. I toss another fireball into the water, but something beneath it jerks violently and pre precisely enough and precisely enough to form a wave that engulfs the flame, leaving the water dark. Margaret gasps and hastily shoves another piece of paper towards me. I swiftly light and throw it out. The water is still for only a moment before this fire is put out again by the splash of an unseen hand. We freeze. I look at Margaret from the corner of my eye and whisper to her. Both Margaret and I are still on the middle of the narrow bridge, only inches away from the edge. Give me all the paper you have left. I will throw it back the way we came. We need to get these creatures away from us. Margaret nods shakily and dumps the remaining papers into my hands. She empties more from her pockets and places those in my arms as well. At least we didn't skimp on the Mount Maid. I set them aflame as fast as possible, lighting two at a time and launching them at the edge of the water before the fire can consume the paper. A chorus of hisses erupt from the Nixie underwater as a flurry of flames come towards them. A torrent of splashes echoes from be beyond the bridges as they grow increasingly agitated at the foreign objects in their lake. I keep a few pieces of paper in my hands and whip towards Margaret. Start moving, quickly! Margaret nods, slightly baffled. The two of us start to sprint down the narrow bridge while the Nixie swim around, distracted by the flames. Once the previous batch of lights have burned out, I ignite the rest of the papers in my hands and toss the collection of flames into the lake. That is the last distraction we'll get. We force our feet to go even faster as the sounds of sloshing water and unearthly murmuring clo grow closer to our heels. I gasp loudly at the, as the bridge below us suddenly lurches to the side. The two of us brace against each other, each other to steady ourselves as the bridge slowly tilts back into place. We gulp as we eye each other. This was not something we had prepared for. The bridge can't hold weight properly. If we step out of line, it could break. Yet we aren't afforded even a moment's reprieve as the sounds of the Nixie break through the haze of racing thoughts. We advance down the bridge, this time more aware of how we place our footing. Our quick pace means some mistakes are inevitable. The bridge starts to tilt again, and our and eager eyes look up at us from right below the waterline. It bends towards the waiting hands of Nixie, and I pull Margaret back while leaning my weight to the opposite side. In a small miracle, the bridge is able to even back out. <clears throat> to even back out, I release the breath I had been holding. Before the monsters can make a move on us, we push ahead. Finally, the boards start to widen out again. Margaret relaxes her shoulders as they stop needing to brush against mine. My heart pounds from the adrenaline that fought against the need to move slowly and, and carefully despite the insane danger. The chorus of whispers increases as we get out of easy reach. The view of the shore draws steadily closer as we go down the path ahead. And as it does, the light of the sun starts to barely, barely peek over the heavy fog. Through the heavy fog, whatever. 
Margaret says something. It's too quiet for me to hear what it was, and I don't have the, t t the breath to ask her to elaborate. I'm running incredibly low on energy by this point, and I can tell from the, the way that Margaret is panting, she is too very tired. And then a dull thud vibrates through the boards. Margaret? I slide, I slide to a stop on the slick bridge and turn to face behind turn to face behind me. Margaret is on the ground. I don't even waste one more moment before going to her side. Are you alright? Can you stand? We have to move. No. I can't keep running anymore, Kika. It's too much. There's nothing out there. There's never been anything out there. You can go by yourself. Margaret, my heart, my, my heart, my heart, my heart sinks at her words. Suddenly, our urgent situation seems much less important. I crouch down to be at her level. She bites back tears and tries to push me away. I know you understand better than most that you can't force someone to do something. I can't do that here, but I can ask if you truly want this. I rest my hand firmly on her shoulder. Margaret, you can make it. We can make it. Even if we don't know what's at the end of this path, we can see it with our own eyes. My voice, my voice. God, my voice starts to shake and I barely get out one last sentence. I don't want to go if you're not there with me. Oh. Margaret looks up at me through the, st through the tears. She's scared, but there's no longer a look of resignation. Still trembling, she starts to rise. I stand with her, a reserved smile forming. Once on her feet, Margaret takes some deep breaths, trying to calm the panic, panic inside her. She looks at me fiercely and nods. She's going to come. Hell yeah, Margaret. Come all over. <laughs> Jeez, I'm sorry. Tears of my own start to fall. I offer her my hand. Margaret takes it without hesitation. We start to run again, and this time we do not stop. We cannot stop. The ever so slowly moving sunrise is our final chance to make it through this nightmare. My fists are curled tightly as we run, our lungs burning from the sharp, humid air. We keep pushing and pushing with nothing but a stubborn refusal to accept this as the end carrying our feet, until eventually we make it. We practically burst onto shore, rushing onto the solid ground and nearly collapsing. We both manage to distance ourselves from the waterline a decent amount before we earnestly crumple to the ground and try to study our erratic breathing. Tears form in my eyes and flood onto my cheeks. We made it. Against all odds, we finally made it to the other side in one piece. I look towards Margaret fondly. It fills me with joy that we both share- that we both are here. Fuck. Just as I believed we could be. She is smiling. After a moment of rest, I force myself off of the ground weakly and stand on quivering legs. I face Margaret again, and this time she locks eyes with me. Margaret pushes herself up and scrambles towards me. She moves in such a hurry and on such unstable legs that she manages to get tangled in the hem of her skirt and tumbles. We're close enough that I'm able to catch her before she hits the ground. I support her as she straightens her, straightens her skirt out. I'm deeply grateful that I'm able to be there for her. She smirks at me and I have to assume she's thinking about how my behavior makes me truly a typical guard. Aww. Cute. This shit is adorable. Achievement unlocked. Determination. Ah. Uh, waiting. I got. I keep getting, like, you know, notifications like, oh, your friend is doing this on Steam. Okay. Can I? Do you go away now? I'm trying to take a screenshot of this tender moment. You know, tender moment. <laughs> cute. This is cute. But suddenly we're embracing. A giddy laugh bubbles up from her and she buries her face in the crook of my neck. She hugs me tightly. I can't keep the blissful smile off of my face and a new waterfall of tears spills down. Margaret lifts her head from my shoulder and gazes into my eyes. Oh no, are we gonna kiss? Neither of us let go as we stay in place and drink in the sight of each other. Our foreheads brush lightly as we relish in the joy of being alive together. Aw, I thought we were gonna kiss, but okay. A noise beside us brings me out of the moment. 
I frantically turned to see where it came from. The disturbance is enough to immediately shoot the attention back up. It's an immense surprise and thrill when Bemele emerges into view. He stands a little ways away, almost gawking at what could potentially be a pair of ghosts in front of him. His momentary shock dissipates and a relieved smile easily replaces it. He murmurs quietly, You're alive. Yes. Yes, I am. I checked this morning. My frayed nerves settle again. He made it to the other side. Our reunion is intentionally interrupted by the final member of our group. The guide, who seemingly materialized out of nowhere, doesn't have a mind to let us get caught up in emotions on the shore of this lake. It is time to leave this place. There is nothing left for you here. Okay. Upon being addressed by him, I rise to my feet. He has a calm look on his face, though there is force behind his serenity. I open my mouth in an attempt to speak, however I quickly realize I have little idea of what to say. He left us behind, but it did indeed lead to- it did indeed lead to success. Must I admit that that, that forsake- must I admit that forsaking others is correct, or was that not truly the only way? And then the fog is removed from my thoughts. After everything that has happened, it becomes clear. I heard my face match his serious disposition. There is something he is certain, certainly right of. This lake isn't a place to linger. Going round and round in circles will never help. We cannot submit our lives or our minds to Sinlos. What I must do if I truly want to defend others is keep them from coming here at all. When I return to my village, I intend to make that information acutely unknown to our elder. For that to happen, we must leave. Goodbye. His eyes narrow as he looks over me. I begin to feel uncomfortable under his scrut scrutiny, but for a moment I could swear I noticed him smiling slightly. However, it could easily be a trick of the morning sun. Bemele merely scoffs. It's perhaps... It's perhaps for the best that Bemele is refusing to acknowledge him rather than deciding to get ca caustic. Caustic? Caustic? At this point, nothing can be done about that man. Margaret steps over to us and regards the guide with a pointed expression. This will be goodbye for us as well. I appreciate the opportunity you've graced me with. However, I won't be returning here. The guide offers no reaction to her statement. In fact, he says nothing at all. Instead, he simply turns on his heel and leaves us alone once more. We make no attempt to stop him, watching him silently as he disappears into the landscape. It is painfully clear that no matter how meaningful this is for us, it is only another day in his life. Once the guide f fully departs, Margaret frowns harshly. This all seems so terribly sad. Yes, it does. I peer at her empathetically and reach over to her hand. I take it in mine tenderly. She looks down at her joined hands and then at me and manages a bittersweet smile. I regard the lake again. It is isolated and desolate, the mist still covering the surface like a suffocating rag. Kika? Kika? What? Margaret's vo worried voice beckons me back to the present. I turn my wistful face to deter- Turn too determined as I realize that there's still much to accomplish ahead of me. We can't stay here any longer. Margaret considers the words with concern. Despite her hesitation, she brings herself to ask a tentative question. Would it be alright for me to come along? Have I been saying that word right, tentative? Tentative? I don't. I don't know how to say that. Uh, of course. The village I'm going to isn't exactly safe. However, you are more than welcome to join me, and I will make certain that you are protected there. Hooray! Margaret's lips turn up into a warm smile as she nods graciously. Thank you. I need some place to go so I can procure a new pair of glasses, and a new way to make a living. Where's Bemily in all of this? Besides, you're forcing yourself to act like nothing affects you, and that simply won't do. I blink a few times, unsure of how to respond to that. I resign myself to <coughs> excuse me. I resign myself to look to looking away with an awkward smile on my face. Margaret hums a teasing tune as she cracks a grin. Her eyes drift closed for a moment, and she grows reflective. You know, it's very strange. I felt trapped in my own life. It was as if no matter what I did, I was always running in place. And there was no way to escape the small, miserable bubble I existed in. She, sne she sneaks a glance at me before continuing. That maze of bridges out there was much of the same. But I, well, 
We found a way out of that miserable place, and there was something for us at the end after all. I wonder if miracles like that can happen in the real world, too. Are you breaking the fourth wall on me right now, Missy? I don't like that. It seems I'm not yet out of tears, and as I feel their presence growing. There is. I'll make sure of it. Margaret regards me with a familiar, teasing smile. Are you still holding on to that idea from the island? Is there anything that can shake that determination of yours? Where's Bemele? I half chuckle at the question. I'm sure there has to be. However, I won't allow something that could break it to occur. Margaret turtles before she grins at me charmingly. I'm glad. That's something I treasure about you, Kika. Thank you. I can't help being a bit bashful. It is so nice to let myself feel how I honestly do. Bimley clears his throat, capturing my attention. Thank you! I drag my eyes away from Margaret to him with a simper on my face for ignoring his presence all this time. Then I snap back to Margaret. Snap back to me. Oh, the ghost gravity. Oh! I meet her deep inside her eyes and her pants. It truly is time for us to leave this place. Margaret's face glows with bravery and a new sort of inner strength. Yes! Let's go! Hooray! We turn around and walk away from the lake. Hooray! Threesome! Without looking back or stopping, I close my eyes and whisper beneath my breath, soft as a falling leaf. To, the, to all those left behind within the Lake of Sinlos, I offer one last rever reverent parting word. Farewell. I hurried to Hemmer as quickly as I could. I already failed to help another during my journey. I could not afford to fail the, fail the villagers. They were grateful to see me, for it was a desperate situation indeed. The urgency meant my, that my mind was occupied with other matters. I worked tirelessly to aid Hemmer's own guards in forcing back the br brigadiers. But during the, but during the moments of calm and when, when the sun went down, I would remember the lake. Bemily was of great help during the fight. His outwardly positive demeanor lifted, lifted the spirits of many around him, but I could see from the shadows in the, his eyes that he hadn't forgotten what, he, what we went through. Rather than be paralyzed by it, he is pushing himself to be even stronger. I admire that about him, and I fully intend to support him the way, that, the way he does for me. After putting Sinlos behind her, Margaret explained where she was originally from, though she has no plans on returning. Despite leaving everything she knew, Margaret boldly looks towards the future. I respect her for her bravery, and I hope for nothing more than the best. I was finally able to learn the name of the stranger we met on the bridges, Lou. As the guide predicted, he did not survive. He had requested a cross and been denied. He must have been truly desperate to attempt the crossing, to attempt the crossing alone. The crossing alone. I can only pray that those who cared for him will, will learn the truth of what happened. I have not heard nor seen the guide since then. He will remain obscured in that realm of fog and fear, a mysterious light off in the distance that is ever out of reach of the real world. As as the task in Hemmer comes to a close, I mentally prepare myself to return home. I'm all too aware that things can never be as they were. I, what I know for certain is that my village elder must be told that no one is to cross Sinlos again. I have already told the Hemmer leaders the same. Not a single more person should have to experience what we did. Its darkness will remain with me for the, the rest of my days. You know what? I had just I just had a thought. I know it's crazy. Why don't, and, and uh, just hear me out, get a bunch of buckets, drop, just grab all the water from Sinlos, and dump it somewhere else. No more lake, just a big old hole where a lake used to be, and a bunch of, you know, shapeshifters just hanging out there, you know? It could happen, or just ha make sure it dries completely out. Or, yeah, no, do that. Yeah, that actually might work. Not a single more person, yep, it's darkness will remain with me for the rest of my days. 
Though so much was lost, I believe that our lessons will keep others from suffering the same way, and in the end, something will be gained. Margaret returned to my, li my village after the task at Hemmer was over. I insisted that she stay with me for a time while she grew accustomed to her new surroundings. While she still liked to tease that all villages, are, all villages were the same, she was grateful for the offer. We, w we are working together to find a new career that is better suited to her talents than the one she was pursuing before, and it does not seem hopeless. She has already managed to acquaint herself with the village elder. I believe it won't be long before she finds a place she can fully shine. It is incredible to still find fulfillment in these small joys. Despite the pain and hardship, I will continue to do all I can to protect others, as well as the life I've come to love. Aw, cute. Lake of Voices. Hooray. Do we really care about the credits? I don't! Well, guys, that's going to be it for this episode of Lake of Voices. If you guys enjoy this and would like to see more of this game, then leave a like down below, leave a comment down below, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, ring that notification bell, and remember, die safely. Bye bye